Hi guys! In this video we will unbox and check the brand new X1 Carbon from Bamboo Labs. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in this video we have the new X1 Carbon 3D printer from Bamboo Lab. This printer is currently on Kickstarter and it's a lot different from what we are used to see on the market. For that reason, it's gathering the interest and curiosity of the 3D printing community. And the numbers already reached on Kickstarter show exactly that. But what makes this printer so special? That's what we will cover on today's video. In fact, we will make a series of videos dedicated to the X1 Carbon to bring you all the details of this new printer. But first, let's start with the unboxing. When opening the box, we can see the printer wrapped inside a plastic bag. And under the printer, we can find four filament spools. And this is the printer. There are a few pieces of tape securing the front glass door and the top glass cover. At the front left side is a flat cable. This will connect to the display as we will show in a few minutes. The printer is available with or without the AMS unit. AMS stands for Automatic Material System and will allow the use of four filament spools which means printing in multicolor or with different filament types. The manufacturer states that it's possible to extend the AMS so it can use up to 16 spools of filament. In our case, since the AMS unit is included, it is sent inside the printer. The AMS unit will come out from the top, so we need to remove the top glass cover. Also inside the printer is a cardboard box that contains some accessories and this needs to be removed as well. The AMS unit is sitting on the plastic support and both are on the print bed. To remove the AMS unit, we need to remove a couple of screws. These screws secure the AMS unit to the support piece. With the screws removed, we can now pull the AMS unit out. The cardboard that is around the print head can also be removed at this time. There's also a piece of foam inside the filament chute that needs to be removed as well. The plastic support also needs to be removed. This piece is secured by four screws from under the printer. So to remove them, we need to access from the bottom side. This plastic piece is only used during transportation, so you can keep it or trash it. On the bed, we also find a couple of spare stickers for the print bed. The heat bed is also secured. There are three screws that need to be removed to release the bed. And the instructions on the print surface can also be removed. The four filaments that came included are one white PLA filament, 250 grams, one orange PLA filament, 250 grams, one filament with infused carbon fiber, 250 grams, and one white filament for supports, also 250 grams, all from Bamboo Lab. Inside the cardboard box, we have several items such as the display, a glue stick, a spool holder, a spare hot end, a couple of spare nozzle cleaners, blades, a few cables, allen keys, a needle to unclog the nozzle, a couple of magnets, some grease, and several screws. 
This is the spare hotend. It's an all-metal hotend and equipped with a 0.4mm nozzle. The manufacturer sends this hotend instead of nozzles, because according to them, it's much easier to replace the hotend than the nozzle. These are the spare nozzle cleaners. The printer needs to move the nozzle over these pieces to clean filament remains from the tip of the nozzle. And this is the spool holder. This is only used when the AMS unit is not included, or you need to print using TPU filament. According to the manufacturer, flexible filament should not be loaded on the AMS unit. This blade will be used if we decide to print the scraper model that they have and a couple of blades to cut the filament. And this is the display. It's a 5-inch touch display. OK, now let's start to install the display. To do that, we first need to connect the flat cable at the back of the display. Then we carefully push the flat cable a bit in, and then we place the display like this. It's possible to tilt the display a little bit up or down. Next is the AMS unit. Inside we have a spare PTFE tube. The unit is equipped with a couple of compartments for desiccant bags to control the humidity inside. The AMS unit is airtight, so it will help to prevent humidity from the environment to reach the filaments thanks to the rubber all around the unit and the way the cover is made to create the seal. It is also equipped with a humidity sensor so we can check its value on the printer's display. The filament exit is also sealed. The unit can load up to four filament spools and it's equipped with an RFID reader. OK, back to the installation. The AMS can be placed on top of the printer like this. At the back of the printer, we need to connect the PTFE tube from the AMS unit to the filament buffer. This buffer is used to make sure the tension on the filaments is within a certain range, so that the extruder inside the print head can work more precisely. If you want to use a filament spool on the spool holder, you need to remove the filament buffer and feed the filament straight through the entry tube. We will install it anyway, so it will be ready to use if needed. It will also help to keep the printer away from the wall. You first need to remove the outer screw and then install the spool holder. For the second screw, you can get one from the spares. Now we need to connect everything. First is the small cable. It will connect the filament buffer to the printer. And the second cable from the filament buffer to the AMS unit. Next is the power cord. And that's it. And this is how the printer looks like. The printer is made from aluminum panels on the outside and the welded steel chassis on the inside. The front door and top cover are made from tempered glass. As we mentioned, our printer is the X1 Carbon, but the manufacturer has two different models, the X1 and the X1 Carbon. On their website they have a table that explains the differences between these two models. OK, we can now turn the printer on. The first time we turn on the printer, we need to go through the initial setup. First is the network. We need to select our Wi-Fi and enter the credentials. Next is display the printer's ID. This QR code is used with the cell phone app to connect with the printer. We will skip this at this time. Next are the terms and conditions, and then the option to share the log files and so on. The last step is to run the initial printer's calibrations. This is all done automatically. The printer will run a few tests 
including some axis calibrations that will make some loud sounds. For the printhead, it checks at different frequencies, and the accelerometer sensor that is inside the printhead will read that data so that it can cancel vibration while printing at very high speeds and accelerations. As you see, the printer does all the necessary calibrations and adjustments, we don't need to do anything. After the printer's calibrations are finished, we can initialize the AMS unit. Once that is done, the printer is ready to print. So, it's time to load some filament and test the printer. Just place the spool on one of the four available slots and insert the filament in the feeder like this. It will detect the filament and pull it automatically. Each filament spool from Bamboo Lab has an ID and the reader from the AMS will detect it and this way knows which filament type it is. For filaments from other brands and because they don't have this ID, we need to type in the filament type in the printer's menu. It's also possible to indicate the filament color. For the filament that was used and was then unloaded, the printer cuts the tip of the filament while unloading, as we can see here. The fact that the user does not need to calibrate or adjust anything is one of the many great features of this machine. It has other nice features such as a 32-bit board with a dual-core processor and a second quad-core unit to take care of the AI features. A print volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters. It's also equipped with a micro lighter sensor for measuring the depth with high accuracy. This sensor is used for first layer inspection, bed leveling, and flow and extrusion calibration. A print bed equipped with a magnetic metal print surface and secured at three points driven by three lead screws. Near each of the three lead screws are piezoelectric ceramic sensors. These will help to detect the Z-home position and bed leveling. The bed leveling has a redundant system, which means that it can level the bed using the piezoelectric sensors and with the LiDAR sensor. At the right side of the bed, there's a calibration board which is used for calibrating and checking the LiDAR sensor. It's equipped with sensors to detect the tension of the belts, a filament odometer to keep track of how much filament was used, a temperature sensor for the chamber, a filament runout sensor. The cooling fans have a feedback system so that the printer can know if they are running correctly. A sensor for the door so that the printer knows if the door is open or closed, an internal camera. With the camera, it can detect if the printer is printing in mid-air, which we normally call spaghetti. It also includes a light inside. The print surface has two sides, one called engineering side and the other called cold side. The axes are built on a core XY structure and with linear rods. The X axis is equipped with carbon rods for less weight. The print head cover can be easily removed because it's secured by magnets. Inside we have an all-metal hotend in direct drive setup, which can reach 300 degrees C, and with a dual gear extruder. The nozzle that comes installed is a hardened steel one. As advertised, this printer can reach crazy fast print speeds and accelerations. The speed can be set on the slicer, but it can also be controlled at any time on the display menus. It's equipped with Wi-Fi and cloud, which means we can access and control the printer remotely. At the left side, there's a big fan that will help with the layer cooling. There's also the nozzle tip cleaner and filament chute. Every time the nozzle is cleaned or purged, the filament remains are dropped in this area and fall out at the back of the printer. At the back, there's a fan that is pulling air from the inside out. And in between, 
there's an air filter. The printer also includes an internal memory with some already sliced models. All these models are stored on its internal memory and not on the cloud. One of our first tests was this Benji. When starting each print, we can choose to run some of the calibrations. One of them is the flow calibration. The printer starts by printing a pattern on the front of the build plate. And then the LiDAR sensor scans it to check it. Then it prints a series of lines. This is to calibrate what we normally call the linear advance. And again, the LiDAR sensor scans them to check as well. All these is something that on other printers, we the user need to calibrate manually. But on this machine, it does all by itself. After the first layer is printed, the LiDAR sensor will then check it and let you know if there is an issue with it. As you can see, this model was printed right out of the box and we didn't need to adjust or calibrate anything. The printer did it all by itself. The Benchy was printed in only 17 minutes. This also shows that this printer can print very fast and at the same time maintain a very good print quality. This other model that was printed also from the internal memory was printed using two colors and it came out very good. Our machine is one of the first units but it already looks very well made. There are still a few bugs on the firmware and on the slicer software but we have been receiving updates so they are on the right track. As we mentioned in the beginning, we will bring you more videos of this machine with even more details. So don't miss the second part of the X1 Carbon video series. And that's it you guys. Hope you liked the video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!